笑了。Welcome to the Doctor's Companion Presents Doctor Who The Long Way Around, the weekly podcast where we review, discuss, and recap every episode of Doctor Who, one Doctor at a time. I'm Scott Corelli. I'm Cassandra Fredrickson. And I'm Nick Jimenez and the Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Today on the show, we'll be discussing Time and the Ronnie, the seventh Doctor's first story, uh, and it is not good. But no. it is written by Pip and Jane Baker, who are not good writers. Yeah. Wait, and wait, by, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. This, is remem- this is remembered as a bad one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. The whole time I was watching this, I thought you guys had said the time of the Ronnie was, like, one of the greatest episodes of the show. Oh, no. no. And I was like, <laughs> no, what the is- shit are they talking about? <laughs> No, this is horrible. No, it's a horrible episode. Okay, I guess I, I guess I heard you guys wrong last week, and you were like, "Oh, well, it's okay if you don't like Twin Dilemma because like Time of the Ronnie is like the best the show's ever been." No, no, no it's the absolute worst. And I was like, "What the shit?" No, it's the absolute worst. It's awful. This is way worse than Twin Dilemma. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 it's horrible. The world makes sense again. Thank you so much. Oh my it's God. horrible. Uh, so, so some quick background before we get into it. Uh, Colin Baker, uh, as the doctor, got the show canceled twice. <laughs> uh, and uh, eventually, uh, John Nathan Turner uh, convinced the BBC to bring it back, um, or the BBC wanted to bring it back and made John Nathan Turner strong armed him into continuing to produce it, even though he didn't really want to. Uh, and told him to get a new doctor and they went to Colin Baker and was like, Hey, do you want to shoot a regeneration scene? And he was like, no, but I will shoot a regeneration season. And BBC laughed at him and said, you're fired. And then, and then uh, they hired Sylvester McCoy and had him uh, shoot the regeneration scene at the top of the, of his first episode in uh, six's costume and a, and a, a blonde clown wig. Um, don't talk about Colin uh, Baker's hair like that. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> well, it's not Colin Baker's hair. That's the problem. <laughs> it is a blonde clown wig. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then we got two, uh, kind of short ish seasons with the seventh doctor, uh, Sylvester McCoy. And then the show was canceled again. And this time, you know, until 2005, um, with with one exception, which we'll talk about next week. Hell uh, yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. But yeah, so so that's uh, that's how we get to time in the Ronnie. Um, obviously, there's a lot more details than that, but we'll get into that as we get through the Colin Baker stuff because I think it'd be more interesting to talk about it there. But um, yeah, that's this, and this is only the second time the Ronnie has been on the show. Uh, it is also her final. Uh, appearance on the show really <laughs> she never comes back after this yes. yeah yeah they she's never been in new who and she never appears again in the seventh doctor era so. oh that's actually really yeah I, I forget how close we are to the end of everything yeah 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 this is this is very close to the end um there's only one season after this uh so yeah that's time in the ronnie um and let's start talking about uh part one cassandra all right um so we open on some really, really terrible 80s special effects. Like the TARDIS is being um, like bumped around in space by these weird <laughs> rainbow lasers. Um, and uh, on the planet, there's some scaly lion. Uh, they're supposed to be lizard people, I guess, but they look more like Thundercats. Um, so they that's what look, I... They, they look like Thundercats who have uh, gotten some sort of horrible scale disease. Yeah, so I'm I gonna refer to them off to mic. <laughs> I refer to them off mic as iguanas with mullets. Yeah. 
mohawk mullets. Mohawk mullets. Yeah. Uh, also, guys, can you guys? Maybe you guys can answer me this question. I don't know, but so they have these mohawk mullet things. Yeah, and I call them have, Zendaya's. Right, and then they have these caps that they're wearing, but I can't tell if the caps that they're wearing are supposed to be – are like really bad bald caps or if that's an actual cap that the character is wearing. That I don't think it's the, out of? I don't think it's yeah. the second one. I don't think they're wearing caps. So, so it's supposed to be a bald cap and they're just really terrible because they don't even stick to their face. I think that's it. Yeah, oh, probably. God. Good boy. Uh, right. so the listeners <laughs> wearing caps. Yeah, um. it, look, it looks like a, like a shower cap, but it's like loosely fitting. You know, yeah, yeah that sounds exactly yeah. like what the BBC had in their costume department at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got these. Ugh. Uh, Don't stick so very well. But the, okay. the TARDIS lands on this planet that is definitely a rock quarry. Um, so it lands, and there's like leprechaun. Like, there's like. <laughs> rainbows? I don't know why the TARDIS is landing and there's a bunch of rainbows, but I half expect a leprechaun to jump out. Um, I know. Not me pot of gold! <laughs> so, is that ever rod- happened? <laughs> Sklam! His little leprechaun feet are like sticking out of the bottom oh, of the no. TARDIS. Like the Wicked Witch of the East. Sylvester <laughs> McCoy is kind of leprechaun-esque in a way. A little bit. Yeah. He's slight and small and full of wisdom. Sure. Yeah, sure. Like he's not McCoy yet. That's true. Yeah. Ish, kind of. Um, so the Ronnie shows up in like this like eighties powered space outfit um, with a big hairy monster thing, um, and she opens the TARDIS door, and the Doctor like regenerates as they're kidnapping him because he and Mel, who we haven't met yet, Mel is his companion, um, are like lying on the floor, and they're just like, oh, they got knocked over when the TARDIS was getting attacked by lasers in space. Um, so the doctor regenerates and it totally is like Sylvester McCoy in a blonde clown wig. And it's the saddest thing. Cause I really like Tom or Colin Baker. But, have you uh, seen, have you seen that fan recreation of the regeneration with like updated special effects and stuff? No, it's really good. Ooh. It's, it's legit. I'll have to show you after we done, we're done recording. Nice. Um, yeah. And then we get eighties credits which I love. I love eighties credits. Oh, um, I love these credits so much. Like <laughs> unabashedly, so like unironically, I love eighties credits. It's really, really bad. Um, but if you haven't seen They're... these, you should like YouTube Sylvester McCoy's Doctor Who credits because they are a sight to behold. Um, I want them to really do special. something. I'm kind of ready for a break from space tunnels. Mm-hmm. Like when the show comes back in 2017, I would not be against like a totally, you know, same theme song, but a totally different like opening sequence. Ah, uh, they can they can wait. They can wait until uh, the new Doctor and new showrunner. Oh, that's so. even better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are in the Ronnie's lab, I guess. Um, and she has this guy. It looks like Einstein. And then the the um, Thundercat people are like, oh. What are we supposed to do with him? She's like, put him in the pod and label him. And they're like, oh, how, what do we label him as? And she's like, Einstein. And they spell it correctly Ugh. the first time. How do, how do aliens <laughs> spell Einstein? I don't know. What a great day for that extra to be like, I'm playing Albert Einstein. <laughs> oh, my God. The drama, though, of her saying. just It's just this fast zoom into Ronnie's face. And she goes, Einstein. <laughs> I, it's 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 ridiculous. Also, it's it's important to note. I, I it, am I incorrect in assuming, or am I misremembering this detail? Th- is this not the first cold open in the series history? Um, I don't know. I I think it might be. This was definitely the first episode that I've seen that credited the episode and the writer in the way that that I'm used to with New Who. Huh. I don't know when they started doing that, but it was like no, time of the run. They all they all did that, but they weren't on the same screen together. It would like tell you the title, and then the title would go away, and then it would say bye, mm. and then the author authors. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know. I don't know if it's the first cold open. I'm not sure. We'll find no. out. I'm gonna investigate yeah. this. Continue. <laughs> 
Um, so for some reason, the Ronnie's kidnapping genius people, assumedly, um, and she's kidnapped the doctor. And the doctor wakes up and they talk, I guess. Um, and he's like, oh, you're the Ronnie. You're up to no good. And she's just like, well, obviously, yeah. So um, he tries to escape, but the big hairy monster thing shows up with like a glitter web gum gun and like it's it's like a net but it's full of glitter and it stuns him i guess um and he falls and hits his head and it's like something that they would it's like something you would see at like an lcd sound system concert it's like a, a cannon that shoots like confetti yeah it's weird glitter. it's 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 bizarre um so Mel is still unconscious in the TARDIS and this other Thundercat guy comes into the TARDIS and steals her. And the um, there's two like Thundercat assistants for the Ronnie. There's like a guy and then this little girl and she's kind of dumb um, and she escapes and she's like running across the wasteland and Mel <laughs> wakes up and she, like this guy is fireman carrying her like over his shoulder. So she wakes up and then immediately starts kicking him. Like there's a lot of over the shoulder carrying of, of, of Mel in this episode. Yeah. Um, Cause she's little. And so just... Mel and this lady Thundercat like are running <laughs> and they run into each other. And then the lady Thundercat's like, Oh, that's weird. And so she kind of veers off, but she like trips a laser or something. And she gets trapped in this ball that <clears throat> spins into the sky and explodes for no, like, for some reason, like, well, it crashes so, and it crashes into a side of the mountain, and then it explodes. Yeah, it's like the most over the top trap. Like, you you could have just yeah. dug a pit, put some leaves on it's it. Kind of, like, <laughs> it's kind of it's it's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like the Zara death scene in Jurassic World, where it's this really kind of like innocuous, really kind, friendly, random character that just gets this horrifyingly prolonged like death sequence. Yeah, and then yeah. you see your skeleton like on the rocks. <laughs> yeah, and they just leave yeah. it there. The the ball of explody death. Um, it's it's a thing. I, <laughs> it's, it's it's really uh, a weird choice. Yeah. Um, I it just feels like they're trying to like show off. Like, ah, look, we got computers. Yeah, but uh, it it doesn't age well at all, and I doubt it looked good uh, like when it came out. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's rough. It's it and it's I don't know it's it's just I uh, I watched the Mummy Returns last night and um, mm, I Scorpion forgot King. yeah I forgot what a benchmark of uh, computer animation that film was <laughs> it's so but funny not not a good benchmark no no kind of like a meme benchmark mm-hmm. which is sad because like the the set design of that movie kind of like this you know like when it's tactile and like physical it looks so great and that's you know like you know the TARDIS console still looks amazing you know no matter what era it's in but Mm -hmm. it's when you start you know it's when these these you know these filmmakers start futzing around with computers and CG animation in a real kind of pretty noble nobly haphazard way where it's like computers bubbles (laughs) it's it's yeah it was it's it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot to take in yeah. Um, so this guy that took Mel from the TARDIS decides to take her hostage and like hog ties her, like ties her wrists. And he's just like, oh, you're with them. They came from the sky and they messed up our planet. And she's like, oh. well, oh, let me let me stop you right there. Okay. We, I, I, I need we need to point out the fact that let's reiterate that Mel wakes up being fireman carried by this by this like by this guy. Right. By this Thundercat guy. The loosest definition of guy that we can. Yeah. She (laughs) wakes up. She wakes up instantly kicks and gets away and runs away. And when she runs, she passes the other – the Thundercat lady that gets gets sucked into the ball of explody death and then dies. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then when she blows up in the distance of the rock quarry – Screaming. Screaming. Mel runs over to the guy who she thought 30 seconds ago was kidnapping her <laughs> and tries to comfort him. Which is so ama- like imagine if an okay, imagine an alien, right, was being carried away by 
let's say like Captain America. Let's say Captain America had like an alien girl like slung over his shoulder because he thought that she was like a, a, a threat. Okay, then they run outside, and then like the alien lady kicks Captain America and starts running through a, wa- a rock quarry and sees, um, let's say Loki. And then Loki's like, oh, hello. Oh, God, no, Jesus Christ, no. And then, like, he explodes in a bubble. And this alien goes to Captain America and, like, gingerly puts a hand on his shoulder. Like, I'm so sorry. And then and then Captain America really punches the alien in the face and hogs the, you, you, and you drags it away. Like, yeah. <laughs> I assume you guys are friends. Because that's what, that's, what, that's what happened. Like – what? <laughs> I I just I, I I just feel like Pip and Jane Baker didn't write a script so much as a list of things that needed to happen. And 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 the director had to do his best to try and make these things connect somehow. Right. It just doesn't ugh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I uh, you were just running from this guy, and now you're trying to comfort him, Mel. Like, what do you just keep running? What are you doing? I like that. I like that about Mel, though. I, I, I. In theory, I guess I would too, but like, I don't. I mean, what did she think was happening? Like, this guy was like, he found her unconscious body and was seemingly just like taking her back to his cave, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, it, I mean, this doesn't, this doesn't scream like comfort level. This screams like uh, attempted rapist. Like uh. maybe she's already become, maybe she's just like really quickly in Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> oh my God. I can fix you. He just, he just build the crap out of her. Forget about her. Oh boy. <laughs> So, okay, so, 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 so now that we're, so while we're on the subject of, I, I want to talk about Mel. How okay. is this okay. her, this is not her first episode, right? No. No. So how did, how did Mel join, um, uh, the, 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 the sixth doctor? What was that? You like? always ask this, like, you think we're going to answer your question. <laughs> well, I just want um, to know a little bit more about like why she's the way that she is. She, she, well, she, here's, here's the thing about she, Mel. She and dresses like little, Raggedy Ann. Here's the thing about Mel. And, okay. and, and this is the thing that like, we're going to, I'm going to tell you just because like of the, the, the reason, <laughs> well, anyway, she has no origin story. Oh. Um, she just appears in the TARDIS in a story last season. Uh, <laughs> and there's no explanation as to where she came from, why she's there. She's just there. And we never found out in the TV episodes why she is the Doctor's companion. Um, uh, I want them to do that now. They did. And it's on our list of things to cover. So we'll get to it. It's a, it's a big finish audio adventure. Oh, man. But I really, I really want like Peter Capaldi to be like, right, Poochie? And then there's just like a, a, a dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 Doctor Who. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so anyway, so, uh, yeah, we never, we don't know where she came from, which is why she's arguably like other than Dodo, which I think everyone agrees is just the absolute worst (laughs) companion of all time. I like Mel is near the bottom of the list for most people. You know, it, she doesn't bother me, but a lot of people can't stand her. And part of that, too, is because she was a well-known actress before she got the role of Doctor's Companion. Ooh, a little bit like Billy Piper. A little bit like Billy Piper, yeah. Except that she didn't win anyone over. Sure. <laughs> um, everyone, everyone, no one liked Bonnie Langford before she was on Doctor Who, and, and everyone hated her even more afterward. I guess so. it would be kind of like if um, – well, no, Ariana Grande is really cool. I guess it would be like if like a, like a, a, like a lame Disney Channel star was like a Doctor Who companion. Is that kind of what happened? Like what uh, kind of actress was she? I don't know. Do you okay. know? I think she Cass? was a stage actress. Um, but okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, definitely, you know, from, from my perspective, you know, going – you know, the, I've actually been really impressed with – the uh, the quality of companions that I've seen so far in this little adventure that we've been going on, like you know, thinking about like Tegan and like the 
the, all of them. <laughs> they've, they've, <laughs> they've all been really cool, funny, weird, interesting characters that aren't just damsels in distress, that aren't like just getting caught. You know, like they're, I, I guess I was expecting Mel from the beginning because I thought that companions like Rose and Martha and Donna and Amy were like, a, hey, we're not like those old companions, you know, kind of like how every Bond girl now has to say, that, like, I'm not your average typical Bond girl. Right. And I guess, you know, watching Mel, I'm like, wow, this is kind of what I would expect all of the other companions to be like, because, you know, Mel is constant in this four part serial. She's constantly getting captured and knocked out and tied up. And it's kind of the first time that I've seen a companion be like that. And I'm, I'm sure in the, you know, the volumes of Doctor Who I haven't seen, there are lots of like damsels in distress companions stories, mm-hmm. but um, this is like the first I have seen in this run. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mel doesn't really get any better either. Like she, <laughs> she, she's like at like probably one of the most incompetent uh, companions uh, to ever be on the show because they've never had to justify her being a companion because <laughs> there was no origin for her. Sure. Yeah. Um, so there was no story where even even when they do eventually explain it, it's really timey wimey in a way where the sixth doctor like meets himself or in the past and is like, Hey, this is your companion now. And he's like, I, all right, I guess you, since you say so. <laughs> Hello. Um, so, so, so it doesn't, Love there's, never a reason, there's never a reason for her to be a, a, a companion. Um, yeah. So she never justifies herself as a companion and she's never competent like ever, but they more than make up for that with the seventh doctor's next companion. Uh, oh, which you'll yeah. meet, which you'll meet in like three or four episodes, I think. I have a question. Um, it's fair, fairly soon. Yeah. Um. So I don't believe this was reunion, but the other episode where they met Sarah Jane and also another companion. Do you remember that episode? She's like blonde. Oh, oh. that's uh, that was Sarah Jane Adventures. Oh, 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 yeah, and they met Matt Smith. I remember. Yeah. I remember now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Never mind. I thought there was an episode of Doctor Who. No, no, no. But that was that that the one with the blonde hair. That was uh, you haven't met her yet, but she's yeah. a third Doctor companion. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. So anyway, because mm-hmm. I, well, I thought that was Mel for a second. Because I'm like, oh, she sucks too. Just like the girl from. Oh, no, no, no. That wasn't Mel. Uh, Mel, you. Mel, pretty much. Le- Bonnie Langford looks really similar to what she looks like now. It's weird. No, oh, good for her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So did do we reach the end? Did we get no, to the not yet. Get, no no okay? Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Let's, okay. talk, let's no. talk about Ronnie. Let's talk You're about sorry. the Ronnie pretending to be Mel because No, it's oh, terrible. Geez. It's um, so awful. So Mel is like tied up and so we go back to the Ronnie and the doctor's knocked out by the glitter web and the doc the Ronnie like It's my favorite like, flaming lips album, by the way, knocked out by the <laughs> Knocked out by the glitter web. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so she <laughs> sticks this giant needle in his arm. She's just like, yeah, I'm just, you know, he needs amnesia. Like, I didn't, okay, that's cool. That's how that works. Um, so he wakes up and she comes out and she is wearing exactly what Mel is wearing. And she has this like red curly wig on. And it is honestly horrifying because <laughs> Mel is in this like puffy sleeved, like, weird pink and white striped thing. It's mm-hmm. kind of candy stripe-ish. My yeah. favorite part about Mel's outfit is that she has these um like ankle warmers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they, they match her sleeves and it's incredible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty spectacular. Um so the Ronnie is dressed like this and she starts acting like Mel and it's really like awful. Um so she <laughs> She's like, oh, hey, doctor, you know, you're awake. You know, you have to fix this. That's what we were doing beforehand when you got knocked over by an explosion. And he's like, oh, okay, seems legit. So he, like, <laughs> tries Which, to, to be like, fair, it kind of does. Like, it does sound legit. <laughs> he, like, tries to fix it. Um, and so the mm. Thundercat is dragging Mel across this quarry and, like, just, like, arguing with her. And she's, like, trying to reason with him, but he's just, like, whatever um and he like steps on one of these laser traps and she's like oh look out and he like barely misses the spinning ball of doom so Mm. i guess that convinces him that she's not evil because 
she like reflexively is just like, wow. Um, so he unties her um, and they run around trying to avoid the really like creepy mouth breathing, hairy thing that's following them around. Um, and so the Uruk, the Uruk, is that what they're called? It's, I don't, it's, I mean, we haven't seen them yet, but it's like a giant vampire bat with like five eyes and four ears and it's really uncomfortable and they have like mm-hmm. hot bellies and and they they also look around a lot like a lot more yeah. at how lucky they are to be alive things. right now <laughs> what sorry never mind what did you just... i'm sorry that was that, that was shameless i'm really that was a... <laughs> you're quoting I, I hamilton you okay, okay. <laughs> They they look around like a lot more than a creature with five eyes should be looking around. <laughs> yeah. Almost like, like look around a eyes. lot. Almost they're as con- if they don't have five eyes, they have two eyes and they're underneath a big woolly helmet. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. They literally have eyes in the back of their head and they're still looking around at stuff. It's <laughs> they look like Jim Henson. Remember how have you guys ever seen like early Jim Henson Muppets? Yeah. yeah. Like when they were just shapes. Yeah, they really <laughs> kind of look like that. Hello, I am the Great Kebab. And I'm over there. Like it, that's what they reminded me of, like rough draft Muppets. Yeah. Also, can we talk about the Ronnie's plan so far? So, like, she's kidnapping <laughs> all these smart people, right? But uh, and that's why she needs the doctor because he ne- he he's going to complete her collection of smart people that she needs for some reason. And oh, we'll find out. But but <laughs> the thing is, yeah, we will find out. But the thing is, like. Off the bat, for some reason, she's like, hey, I'm too dumb to fix this machine. Can you fix this machine? Yeah. And and in general, her plan here is I am a brilliant scientist. However, I am too stupid to fix – figure this out. So I need smart people. Yeah. It, it's like she – she she it turns into like a Bugs Bunny plan like halfway it's, through. It's absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. Um, Like if she's supposed to be this brilliant scientist, why does – why – in her second story, it's not like they're running out of Ronnie's stories. Like, <laughs> this is only the second one. And in the second one, she's like, well, uh, I I'm need just to figure something lady. out. And I'm going to need smart people to do it because I'm not smart. Because I'm a lady. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, but, like, okay, in so, her, like, oh, no, in please, her please. story, it's, like, the doctor and the master and the Ronnie. <clears throat> so I, we'll get to it. It's equally as terrible. But – yeah why are you undermining your villain that you created and yeah. it's uh, the worst the <laughs> the doctor needs something out of his tardis i really don't it's plot devicey um so they go to the tardis um and he does the clothes changey thing and he comes out as napoleon which is kind of funny um and then he comes out like in quick su- succession like tom baker john pertwee Peter Davison, and then he's wearing Troughton's like big fluffy Yeti coat, and then like he opens it, and then underneath that is his like signature McCoy outfit. Um, and the Ronnie's just like, oh, come on, can we, can we, can we get along with this, please? Um, but like, I, I do, I do really like the idea that time ladies have no patience for this because they can control their regenerations in ways that male like time lords can't yeah um so i i like the idea of her just being like kind of just like rolling her eyes because she's like oh my god it, this, boys yeah <laughs> this is ridiculous like i just i like i like the idea of of uh men and women stereotypes on gallifrey being uh, the opposite like it's the men that take forever to get ready yeah i do like that <laughs> i like that idea <laughs> I just figured – Actually, you like, know, the, the – the, the, Oh, I just figured because like she was the wrong oh, no, no, yeah. she was just like, oh, come on. I have no patience for anybody. But I kind of like that now that you pointed out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like – God, I, the idea – you know, you guys have been saying this. You, you guys have been warning me. <laughs> but like any anything involving Time Lords is way cooler in concept than execution on the show. Mm-hmm. And so I keep thinking about like how cool it would be to actually do like, you know, like – actual world building on Gallifrey. Like there's a way to make this mythos cool. There is. They've just only, they've only done it once um, correctly. Well, yeah. twice correctly. Cause, cause war games is pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so I would say like, imagine if Gallifrey was a matriarchy. 
Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, you know we'll we'll get there. There there's some there are some good ones. Um, there are okay. some good ones and there are some bad ones, but we'll, we'll deal with both of them as we go along. <laughs> Due time. <laughs> so, so after the doctor changes, he looks at the Ronnie and he like has a weird hallucination and like her face morphs <laughs> into Mel yeah. for some reason. And he's like, oh man, that's weird. Um, and <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like one of his brains was like, look stupid. <laughs> yeah. So outside the big hairy bat things, they find um, Mel and somehow she's on the TARDIS like display screen and the Ronnie is like, oh, doctor, that must be the Ronnie. And the doctor's like, oh, yeah, obviously, because you're Mel and that's another woman on this planet. So it must be the Ronnie. You're dressed exactly alike. Yeah. (laughs) And the Ronnie's like, oh, we have to destroy her. And the doctor's like, whoa, that's that's don't be too uh, don't be so hasty. And then. So Mel runs from the bat thing and she trips this, the, the one of the laser traps and she is stuck in the, the ball of doom and she like s- spins off into the sky screaming. And that's how this episode <laughs> ends. And we're like, huh? She's going to, she's going to die. She's uh, looking looking, ball of looking good guys. Totally. Mel's dead. And, and all of the <laughs> Bonnie Langford, uh, uh, all the Bonnie Langford haters applauded and cheered. Yeah. Um, Mel is dead. Long live Mel. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, it's uh, it's awful. I mean, it's really awful. This is all <laughs> really, this is all really, really uh, and not even awful in an entertaining way, like awful in a boring way. And the thing is, like, as we continue to explain the plot of this story, it's a lot of people. I mean, it's literally the story is just people running in circles like that's yeah. all this is. Um, yeah, like I, I believe it's kind of like it. the The entire story of Time of the Ronnie takes place in maybe the length of like like five yards. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's true. The only exception could maybe be the uh, the uh, leisure the leisure center or whatever whatever you call it. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but other than that, uh, that yeah, you're totally right. It's like all within five yards. Also, what's with all the pyramids? Why? Why is the Ronnie like that. super into pyramids? I have no yeah, idea. It's an aesthetic thing. Is it because? Is it? Uh, no, that's not. I always, I always get confused with 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 pyramids because pyramids are are a triangle. So I think like threes, but there it's not really, not really like threes with mm-hmm. a pyramid because it's well. One day you're gonna have to ask the aliens to build this stuff. <laughs> yeah. But but I but yeah I was just thinking like oh is it because she's like the third time lord or or whatever but mm-hmm. um it, maybe it's kind of like a Cleopatra thing maybe that would be a really cool reveal that the Ronnie was Cleopatra that was Cleopatra coming at was you. like way cooler though than the Ronnie obviously well I mean more, <laughs> is more is so Cleopatra than, in the show more so than this Ronnie at least um I mean you know this could be Ronnie. 1.0. She could get better. Yeah. I'm has, always uh, hoping. Cleopatra has, Cleopatra has been in Doctor Who, correct? Um, River Song pretended to be her. Yeah, I think that's Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the closest. Um, but, yeah. So, Nick, tell us about part two. How, how, how hard does Mel die? <laughs> well, Scott and Cassandra, she die so hard that she uh, her bubble lands safely in a lake. Oh, okay. So it happens completely different this time. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying no, there's it, no consistency to the explodey ball uh, explodey ball technology. So the thing I can – I guess the closest thing I can relay to the listener as to what happens is – so you know how like when – so back in like the early 2000s, do you remember when you would leave – your TV monitor or your computer monitor alone. And like, it would be like a ball that would bounce from like corner of the screen to corner of the screen. Oh yeah. Like a screensaver. Yeah. A screensaver. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. English. <laughs> um, I thought you were talking about Pong. So <laughs> it is, it is kind of like Pong. Um, so, you know, you when it was my um, age, uh, <laughs> I don't know what Pong is. That, um, so 
Yeah, so when 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 the dinosaur lady got caught in the bubble, it like bounced around for a while and then went directly into a wall and she exploded and became a skeleton. When Mel is in the bubble, it like starts to bounce, but then it kind of just shoots off and lands safely in a lake. So it's almost like this bubble in order to detonate has to like hit a hard surface and Mel's just didn't <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> Um, it, it, it kind of makes me feel even worse for this, um, the, the dinosaur lady. And I, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to, I can't remember if we figure this out in part two or not, but we find out that she is the daughter of, um, some other, some other iguanas that we're going to meet later <laughs> on. So like, so like this girl, like meant something to people and she just, she just died because this stupid thing bumped into a rock. And the only reason Mel's alive is because it didn't bump into a rock. It just stupidly fell into a lake. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, so Icona, I, 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 Icona, the guy, the guy Iguana is able to free her. Yeah. It's like, Icona. what's his name? Icona. Icona. Um, so meanwhile, um, <laughs> the doctor and quote Mel uh, <laughs> are in the lab <laughs> And she's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you were working? And he's like, I'm the doctor. This is weird. I have amnesia. and Nothing makes sense. And you used to really like this scientist, but now you don't know when I'm quoting him. And that's weird, but whatever. And um, so the Ronnie's like, hey, you need to you need to kill Mal for real. I don't know why that bubble didn't do it, but like you need to you need to kill Mal. And uh, so the doctor finds the, the thing that he was looking for. He was looking for like a tool in the TARDIS, right? And um, so he sees that one of the mineral plates inside of the, 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 the console is like burnt out. And he's like, oh, it's such I mean, this is kind of I wish they had done more of this. But there's this fun little moment where he's like, I'm so stupid. I forgot to do this. Only an idiot would make this mistake. And then he's like, yeah, you are stupid for not noticing <laughs> that. And, and like that was funny. Like I thought that was because like he's insulting himself, but he's actually insulting her. I thought that was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> happens for like two seconds uh and so the doctor realizes uh that he's been he's been had you know that this is not mel (laughs) this is not my beautiful mel and uh so then mel runs into the lab and the doctor's like you're the ronnie and he's like no i'm not and then you know uh she's picked up again and and fireman carried around for they have like a weird fight (laughs) and um mel doesn't and the doctor says my favorite line in the whole episode Oh, tell me, because I, I don't know what it is. Where he says, he he goes, quit the melodrama. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. Oh, it's ridiculous. Anyway, continue. And, and so eventually they go over to like a table. And so Mel doesn't believe that he's the doctor because he's used, she's used to Colin Baker. And the doctor doesn't believe that it's Mel because she's used to the Ronnie in like a Reba, a Reba McIntyre way. So... <laughs> Like, and so the doctor's like, look, check my pulse. You will see that there are two of them. Okay. And I was like, okay. And she's like, oh, you do have two pulses. And he goes like, and you're, you have one pulse. You're Mel. Oh, Mel. Oh, I miss you. And she's like, you look so different. You're, <laughs> which, what? I mean, you know, I mean, com- okay. Compare. Tom Baker to Peter Davidson. That's a big change. Yeah. You know? But mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, like, it, McCoy doesn't look that much different from Colin Baker. I mean, really? I don't know. They both have noses. <laughs> He's smaller, um, brunette, kind of scrappy looking. That's He's, true. He's very scrappy looking. Um, so, anyway, we're all finally, and this is why I don't like, I never like amnesia episodes. Anytime a show I like has an amnesia arc or an amnesia episode, I immediately lose interest because every amnesia story ends with the characters finally catching up with the audience. And that's never fun. I don't want to see characters be behind me. I want to see characters that are smarter than me or on the same page as me. It's just mm-hmm. the I, only time I've, the only time it works is if they do it in a reverse way where you meet the character who doesn't know who they are and then they figure out who they are. And that's a reveal for everyone. Oh, totally. Like, uh, like White Bear. I don't know what that is, but I was thinking of like the master in Utopia. Oh, okay. Uh, what's that episode <laughs> of, of Black Mirror with like the, the the reenactment? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That works too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But absolutely. I just 
but so like the the dumb part about this episode is for like two almost two whole parts we've had the main character just not know that he's with the bad guy and like we're not finding out anything we're not because you know when the doctor and the doctor has teamed up with his villains before you know most recently this past season where he had to like kind of have an uneasy alliance with Davros and that was really fascinating Mm -hmm. so the idea of doctor and the Ronnie but the doctor doesn't know that it's the Ronnie having to solve a problem together that could be really really cool and interesting but it's just all played for like really cheap comedy quote but not even really like Mm -hmm. I don't know it just kind of it it could be a cool idea because like imagine if the Joker and Batman woke up in a room together with no memory of who they were and they have to like solve that they escape together. Right. Like that, that could be really cool. Um, so anyway. Funny, funny you should say that because it's literally just happened in the Batman comics. Oh, Scott Snyder, man. Yeah. <laughs> ah, man, I'm – those books terrify me just in terms of – when I, when I get them, are they easy to – like? They, the Snyder every time, ones are, yeah. Okay, I just every time I, th- I think of Batman comics, I always think of just continuity with oh, a capital yeah. C. No, not oh. not not his. Okay, dub 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 yeah. dub dub. So um, they <laughs> so they decide to find out what the Ronnie's been up to this whole time. So um, so they meet two other. Okay, so the lizard girl that died has a mommy and a daddy, and <laughs> their names are Bayus and Faroon. And Bayus and they're kind of. It's vague, but they seem like they're sort of the community leaders of these people. Like, they're definitely respected members of of the the iguana people. Um, So they're like, "Hey, our daughter's dead, but you know, we're we're committed to stopping the Rani. So let's let us now show you what this has all been for." And hand to God, I'm not kidding. uh, They open a a door, and there's a a huge brain on a on a slab hooked up to wires, Mm -hmm. and just a huge, like a pumpkin-sized brain, and it's like throbbing, and it's oh, it's gross bigger than a pumpkin. Oh yeah, it's actually way bigger than a pumpkin. It's actually more like a watermelon. No, it's bigger than that. It, I mean, it's 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 not quite the size of a small car, but it's big. Oh man, I get, I get, um, wow, yeah, I guess it was that big. Because uh, it takes so, up the whole center of the room. It's like the size of the, a TARDIS console. In fact, I'm pretty sure that it's the set of a TARDIS console room. That they've just taken the console part out of, relit it, and then put a platter in the middle and throw threw down this giant brain. I would watch the crap out of a behind the scenes reality show about this, like the, the the craft of making an episode of Doctor Who. Yeah, like I'm pretty got, sure it looks like a TARDIS console room to me. It's like, all right, man, we got fifteen dollars. We got we got we got fifty quid, and uh, we have to get a joint <laughs> brain in a room. With wires <laughs> tomorrow. How do we do this? Oh, we can use a TARDIS. We can use a TARDIS set. Put the brain over it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love the ingenuity of this. Even when the even when the writing is somewhat shoddy, I you know you can't fake. I I don't know the, the romantic like the theater nerd in me just loves the idea of like these underdogs at the BBC just making a show. You know, it's like yeah. how I love hearing. Stories about how you know the 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 the, the crew on Saturday Night Live have three days to like build like the White House. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All this crazy stuff. So um, this brain is channeling the smart people that are in cryo, like Einstein and who knows who else. Um, they're like they're like channeling the the brains of those geniuses into a single like hive mind, and then. There's an asteroid coming made of strange matter mm-hmm. and it's about to pass. And so what the Ronnie's been trying to do is she made a rocket to collide with the asteroid in time for the solstice. And so – but the only thing that could stop this is actually – like strange matter can only be destroyed by strange matter. So she's using the brain to like find – some kind of substitute for the brain, the strange matter. Did that make any sense, guys? I mean, yeah. it does to me because I, I mean, just watched it, but. <laughs> okay, I, I, I just want to make sure that I, I explained that adequately. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of holes in it, but that's not your fault. <laughs> okay, cool. I just want to make sure that I, I'm doing my best. Because uh, we don't know why she's doing this. Okay, and we, we know never what really she's doing, but we don't know why, and I don't think we ever find out why. <laughs> yeah. 
So so Faroon Faroon goes back to the lab and like make sure that Mel is safe because Mel's Mel needs help. Uh, and so <laughs> meanwhile, Mel, Mel just needs some help, you guys. I think and that so, was uh, I think that was Bonnie Langford's uh, autobiography title. I need help. No, no, like Bonnie Mel, Langford. Mel needs, the Bonnie <laughs> Langford. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> help me by Bonnie Lang. No, I, I'm sure she's wonderful. Um, They're making me write this. My <laughs> Bonnie Langford story. Oh my god. Uh, so, so the Ronnie comes back and she's like, "I'm going to show you my brain, doc. I'm going to show you my brain." And then the doctor's like, "No, you ain't." And so he escapes in a in a in a pit. But then, lo and behold, he is surrounded by um, the the iBat the iBat dogs. <laughs> um, according to the wiki, they are called tetraps. Tetraps, and and part two ends with the doctor being surrounded by a brood of tetraps. Yep. Uh, holy crap, guys! Part two is awful. Holy actual crap! Yep. <laughs> part two is part two is just as bad as part one. Uh, maybe even worse. Uh, it's really because bad. it's still going. I am glad that the Ronnie is just the Ronnie now and not like Mel. Yeah. Although she's she she, she stays dressed as Mel for like another episode. <laughs> well, who wouldn't? Um. So, uh, part three, the Doctor is surrounded by the Tetraps, uh, which which are the quad-eyed bat people, and um, in their bat cave they have a bat cave because they're of bat course. people. They're all they hang upside, upside down. down. Yeah. And uh, the doctor escapes because Baeus uh, feeds them blood um, in a trough. Uh, there's a trough, and it and they pour blood into the trough, and then the trough fills with blood, and then the bats. People it's so gross. It's, so, it's like it's really goopy, and I thought it, it looked like the ooze from Power Rangers. Really, yeah. Um, so then the doctor gets to escape because uh, Baeus opens up the the, the grate. Uh, and and doctor the doctor uh, escapes out of the cave, and then he goes into the Ronnie's lab and he steals a part of the machine that she was making him fix, um, and then gets caught and runs away. Um, and then meanwhile, Mel uh, gets bit by uh, Urak, um, Urak being one of the bat people, like the lead bat person. Wait, uh, I thought the bat people were tetraps. Right, but this but this tet trap has a name. Like oh, Urak. okay. This is the is this the one that accidentally shot the Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. Exactly. Urak. Okay. Um, cool. though, though I don't think that's happened yet. Right? Okay. Did that happen? Uh, Was, I don't think. I don't. <laughs> know. At one point, Urak sees. I think it happened in part two because it happened while um, while Mel and the Doctor were reuniting. But there was a scene where I don't know why, but the uh, Ronnie was just running around the quarry, and hmm. Urak sees the back of the, of the Ronnie and it's like, Oh, it's Mel. And so she shoots her with the glitter can and she's like, you idiot. And he's like, womp, womp. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think that, yeah, that was Urak. So Urak bites Mel and paralyzes her with his, with his mouth venom. But it and looks, it looks kind of like the way that she bites him is kind of like, he's like leaning in to tell her a secret. And then she just like becomes yeah, like a vampire. Like they probably yeah. told him you're a vampire bat. And he's like, Oh, okay. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Mel just and like then, freezes. And then another bat person is put in a ball of exploded death and dies. How many of those friggin' things that she set? A lot. Um, it's a whole <laughs> rock quarry. It's a whole rock quarry. <laughs> the whole death trap. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, they bring Mel back to uh, the Ronnie, and the Ronnie's like, excellent. We can trade the part that the doctor stole from Mel. And then meanwhile, the doctor meets up with uh, Ikona, who takes mm-hmm. the doctor to the center of leisure, uh, which is basically a day spa slash drug den where all of the Thundercat uh, Mohawk iguanas uh, hang out on pillows and in hammocks <laughs> and uh, refuse to talk to anyone because it, m- talking to someone may encroach on their leisure. Um, it kind of reminded me of the opium den in Inception. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And then, uh, so th- so uh, the doctor was told to go here by um, uh, Baeus. 
And so he's – but Bayes didn't tell him what to look for. So he's there and he's just like, OK, so uh, Okona hates this place because he's like all these lazy idiots um, are the worst. <laughs> and uh, – and- <laughs> He's my, my, my country of drug addicts. <laughs> yeah. All these lazy idiots are the worst. And, and the doctor's like, all right, well, uh, what, what, I mean, you've been in here before, right? Is anything new? And he's like, well, that thing's new. And he points to what can only dis- <laughs> be described as a disco ball of doom. <laughs> um, because it's a rusted disco ball with, with a, um, what what is what is the thing called? I'm I'm it just dropped out of my brain. What's the thing called that like like the rings of Saturn? Like what are those called? Akaten? Is that what it's called? No. So so oh, the, I'm so sorry. I don't I, know what they're called. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't know, know what they're those called. But, it's like, the rings but, it, but it has like a ring of Saturn around it, but the ring is made of like sharp pointy metal. Um Okay. And he's like, Hey, that's uh that's new. Uh but you know, it's just another garish thing with these with these idiots these drug addicted idiots and the, the doctor's like okay well i mean you know that's something right maybe that does something let's ask somebody and he's like no one's gonna talk to us so he talks to one person and they won't talk to him they just go back to eating grapes or whatever the hell and then somebody <laughs> else like, sucks somebody else is like hey hey uh uh you know icona come here and he's like oh hey i know you and he, they go he's like hey tell me what tell me about this uh this big ball of death thing that's up here he's like we have not we have been we have been told never to tell anyone about it we're not even allowed to look at it and he's like well that's weird and then in that moment uh meanwhile the ronnie finds out that uh the doctor and and akona are at the leisure uh, the leisure center and she's like oh, okay turn on the big ball of of, of doom and so she turns it on and then insects, like deadly poisonous <laughs> insects, escape from the ball of doom and start murdering every, every, uh, every thundercat iguana in the, in the place. And the doctor and Akona get the hell out of there. Um, and, uh, and then the, they were like, okay, well, let's go ahead and meet and trade with the, with the Ronnie then because we don't, we don't have any leverage. So they bring the part out. They give the part to him, and then and then Mel runs across to reunite with the doctor. Turns out Mel is a hologram, um, which is great. Uh, the old and, Mel is a hologram trick. Yep, and the, <laughs> and the doctor is just like drat foiled again. And uh, but then we go to the real Mel, and Mel is uh, reenacting this the the scene of Luke in the Wampa Cave, um, in the Tetrap Cave. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, but she doesn't uh, wake up and, and call upon the force. Instead, uh, one of the uh, one of the tetraps like bring her down and 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 drag her away again. Why sure. she was up there to begin with, I don't know. She was just there, and then they bring her down off of there. Um, and then the doctor is captured and hooked up to the hive mind. And Mel watches and screams. And then the doctor convulses as his brain joins the hive mind. And that's how part three ends. Yes. Um, Pretty open and shut. Yep. 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 Center of leisure. Center <laughs> of leisure. So, like, I don't really get. Okay, so, like, let, let's talk about the Ood, okay? So. The, <laughs> can we please finally can we talk, can we, talk about the please? Ud? Can we talk about anything else? Let's talk about the Ud. <laughs> Won't someone please think of the Ud? <laughs> so the Ud are a species that is known for being enslaved, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, like that's kind of the right. You know, they're they're this noble kind of kind, loving, but often oppressed people because of like their passive nature. Uh, you know, as Donna once said, you know, they 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 literally hold their heart in their hand for anyone to to you know, to touch or hurt or break. So only, isn't it their brain that they hold? It is their brains. Um, uh, I mean, I I always remember Donna has that great little monologue. Uh, uh, so these, so these, the, these mullet iguanas, I, I think, I don't know. I have a very low opinion of them, but just based on everything that I've seen so far, like, it seems like the Ronnie just like waltzed in, like, held like three of them hostage one of like the one of them is dead like people have died and the ronnie is just kind of like not the ronnie but the these 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 iguanas are just kind of like chilling and 
it's they're just such a weird species. Well, they're kind of spineless. Yeah, they're just very passive, but not like in a gentle uh, 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 ood way, but just kind of like in a they, weird. They sort of remind me of um, that creature that is Cassandra's assistant. Oh, in in uh, the Temp Doctor stories. Yeah, the the New Earth thing. Yeah, in New uh, Earth. New yeah. New Earth. I was like, what? I have an assistant now. Yeah, you know yeah, your assistant. No, not, not, not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not you, uh, no, the, the piece of skin stretched <laughs> yeah. out. That Moisturize me. Moisturize me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That thing. <laughs> Madam Hoosh. That's what they, yeah, they remind me of that guy the, guy, the guy that she possesses at the end of her second story. Or they're kind of like Man. that um, that weird rat race that is just like, oh, like they're Love the most uh, oppressed like planet in the galaxy or whatever. Like, oh, and they like love being oppressed? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, wasn't one of them in um, – it was the one where – remember the part two episode this season that takes place like, on like a farm for no reason? It's like – Yeah, uh, it's the, like a, the lake one. Yeah, behind the lake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Under the lake. Yeah, yeah they're <laughs> definitely they're, – they're a little like that too. Um, yeah, there's some – I'm not entirely comfortable with the weird sexual tension between like Mel and that guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Which just kind of came out of nowhere. I I just feel like Mel is one of those people who just like, is just like desperately wants a boyfriend and like any guy that that pays attention to her, she like kind of falls for a little. Like it's just, it's really weird. It's a weird choice for a character. She's kind of like a girl Brock. (laughs) (laughs) Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say kind of like Mabel Pines a little bit. Mm-hmm. Aww. Yeah. But oh, not well. as cool. <laughs> They'd be great companions, wouldn't they? <laughs> Brock and Mabel? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, Dipper and Mabel. Not- <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, Di- Di- Dipper and Mabel would be great companions. Can you imagine if, like, especially, especially with Capaldi? Oh, yeah. It'd be, like, his grandkids. Yeah. He could be, like, Uncle Stan. Yeah. <laughs> be fantastic. Can you imagine, like, you know, the BBC has like a like a press conference. Like, we would like to now announce the um the new companions of Doctor Who. We're very excited. We'll be bringing in um Brock, the gym leader, and uh, Mabel <laughs> Dipper from Mabel Pines from. Uh, <laughs> um, what? <laughs> yes, we'll be implementing uh, with nothing animation and live action. Uh, you, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Have you have you seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Sort of um, going for that sort of energy. <laughs> the animation style of Brock and Mabel are completely different. Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're very aware. Uh, <laughs> we are. It was a choice, not mine. It was not my a choice. choice. <laughs> Chibnall has a uh, clear vision. Twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> I think if that was Chibnall's vision, I would, I would find out what his address was. Put a hundred dollars in an envelope and just send it to him. <laughs> Imagine, okay, so Chibnall's like in the room with like, like everyone, you know, like the head of the BBC, and he's like, right. So, thank you so much. For, you know, it's an honor. I've grown up loving Doctor Who. It's been my favorite. You know, I've written for it, but I'm very excited to share my vision. And it's like, what's under? He has, he has like a, he has like a he has like a cardboard thing over like a white sheet. <laughs> it's like this is my plan. And then he throws off the white sheet and it's just like a picture of Peter Capaldi. And then he just taped a picture of Brock and a picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's no, it's one of those, it's one of those things where it's, it's, he puts up like a picture of Capaldi and then he drops down like one of those clear film things oh, yeah. <laughs> over it and that superimposes yeah. the two of them over it. Perfect. Over the picture of Capaldi. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, this is what I want to do. Actually, this is uh, exactly what I want to do because uh, this is actually how the technology would work. In <laughs> you just put on, and then we would get um, Chris and Shaw and whoever played Brock to uh, <laughs> record new dialogue. Oh God, Chris <laughs> Shaw! Oh my God, they get they get Chris and Shaw back. <laughs> 
god. Oh, oh fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> there is no main bill without Kristen Scholl. Something can't be done. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Well, <laughs> I guess there's a fourth part to this story. Yeah. Oh, damn it. I forgot we hadn't done that yet. <laughs> why don't you... Why don't you tell us... Oh how, my god! How does this? How does the story? Uh, how does the story come together, Cass? No, not good. Um, <laughs> so the the doctor's hooked up to the big gross brain thing, um, and they're all thinking about time or whatever they're doing, hanging out, uh, swapping recipes, whatever. Um, so the from like the plan as it stands is the Ronnie needs to blow up the asteroid at the right time. Mm -hmm. question mark like she can't figure out trajectories on her own like uh, nasa does that like what right but she but but, yeah she's a woman so (sighs) of course (laughs) um so (laughs) (laughs) all the all the creepy vampire bats come ambling out of their bat cave for like no reason to follow the main guy um, and, um, Icona, the Thundercat sneaks around watching them like, oh, they're up to no good. Um, and the no doctor, good. the doctor overloads the, the big brain with like random stuff, like just random crap. And you can hear him just like talking about stuff. So he like says idioms wrong and like messes up their calculations or whatever. And the Ronnie. Oh like, yeah. This oh, whole time has been like the running, the running joke that he keeps getting like colloquialisms wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she's like, I'll kill him. So she, like, lets him out. But then they push her into the little cryo pod and lock her in there. And they... It's terrible. It's terrible plan. Um, so the bats are in this the leisure, the, the spa, the day spa. And they are like, put these anklets on. And they look like really crappy like futuristic like you know those parole anklets you put on criminals yeah so they're like put these on and they're like oh okay um and they randomly vaporize like an innocent like iguana thundercat just to prove a point i guess like don't don't disobey us because you'll be like that guy um and um the uh I forget his name, the leader guy, the leader iguana lets the Ronnie out because he's like still under the impression that like if he follows her commands, like he'll Faroon. No, no, uh I- Icona. No, the other one. Baeus. I don't remember. Yeah, Baeus. He he's still <laughs> under the impression that if he follows what the Ronnie wants, like she'll just leave him all alone. Um so she apparently this is the big plan. Ronnie wants to blow up this asteroid made of strange matter to of make to make a, a big ass time brain to rule the universe. Like that's Quote, that's, big that's ass what brain. I've got out of it. Like the brain would explode, but then time particles would surround the thing, and then it'd be a big ass time brain. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, sure. No, I mean you're doing your her, best. That's her plan. Um, you <laughs> and the she's just like yeah you know whatever everything except the brain would explode and die and it's fine um so the the lead bat like hears that they're gonna get all blown up and he's just like question mark um mama and and the brain like spits out the equation or whatever that she needs and she's just like yeah i knew i could do it or whatever and she's like crying or whatever um and the doctor and mel escape and they break the thundercats out of their parole anklets um with some weird shoddy circuitry i guess um and the ronnie's like yeah, no, sorry. I'm going to go watch the explosion from my TARDIS. Uh, Batman, you've been a cool dude, but make sure nothing happens. I'm just going to leave. Um, bye. And, yeah, it's like, okay, bye. Um, the doctor breaks all the... Uh, he, they, like, break back into the... Like, they run back and forth, and it's they must be, like, a half a mile apart, because there's no way. Um but he comes back into the lab and he breaks all the, the famous people out of the pods. Um, and then they start strapping the anklets to the brain apparatus to blow it up. 
I guess. Um, and the the uh, Thundercat leader uh, <laughs> stays to make sure that it blows up and everyone runs <laughs> out. And the Ronnie's at her TARDIS and the doctor is like, ha ha, I stopped the clock with four seconds. What are you going to do about it? And she's just like, curse you. And the Ronnie is just like, well, because of your insolence, I'm going to blow up all the iguana people. So she like puts it in on her like Apple watch or whatever she's got on her wrist. And she like blows up the anklets, but they're strapped to the brain. So the brain blows up and the rocket still takes off because the clock starts again. Uh, and the Ronnie leaves in her dumb pyramid TARDIS, but because it got delayed a few seconds, I guess the rocket misses and the doctor shepherds all the smart people in his TARDIS and they say goodbye to the, the lizard people. None of them have any lines. No, they're just like kind of funneled in. There's like a few like Egyptian looking ones and like all these like historical figures, but they're just like, Einstein is like inspecting the TARDIS console. It's yeah. a real Bill, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure kind of ending. I it's, wish. It's so weird. And then they're like saying goodbye to the Iguana Thundercats. And the doctor is like, oh, by the way, here's the antidote for <laughs> the insects. And Icona is just like, he takes the vial and he just like dumps it on the, gla- the ground. And he like throws it. And everyone's like, gasp. And like the leader the lady, yeah. like for for Rune, I guess she's just like, oh yeah, he's of the opinion that if we don't actually like put ourselves toward whatever, we're all gonna die. So thanks so for that, but it, it's his fault if we all die. Um, and then he's like, oh, you know, I my one regret is that the Ronnie got away in her TARDIS, and the Doctor's like, well, about that, and it like cuts to the Ronnie being strung up by all the weird bat things in her TARDIS. Because they got mad that she was going to leave them. Um, and they're just like, yes, you will be our bat queen. And she was like, no. And then. We never saw her again. Yeah. It's, that's how it ends. She was yeah. presumably uh, horribly murdered by all of the <laughs> bad people. Okay. Here's my thing. Guys. This, <laughs> th- okay. Here's, stay with me. This came out in 1987, right? Mm-hmm. In next year, it will be 30 years since Time of the Ronnie. Mm -hmm. I think now is the perfect time to bring that character back. And I don't want her to have had any more adventures since being abducted by the (laughs) Bat People. She has been with the Bat People for 30 years. The only only issue with that is that because this is pre-Time War – she would have been abducted by the Time Lords and put into the Time War when that happened. So uh, that's true. Yeah, because that was like an auto, like an auto automatic thing. Yeah. Like they just they sucked all the Time Lords. They had an instant the Time card. War. <laughs> it's a hell of a draft. Uh, yeah. So 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 the part where um the where um Urfran or uh, Akun like pours out the antidote. <laughs> Like, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me let me let me pause you oh, right there because I just please, got yeah. this amazing story idea. So, okay, okay. so you know how Gallifrey's back now, right? Yes. So, yeah. So, what if they brought her? They they drafted her. They did their teleportation draft for the Rani in the Time War, but she has been with the Bat People this entire time, and so when they zap her back, the Rani is just like feral. And yes, like, exactly. And, yeah. and, like, you just can't – they just couldn't even put her in the war. So they just put her in uh, like a, in a dungeon on Gallifrey somewhere and then like the doctor like finds her or whatever. Yeah. And she's like been through a couple of regenerations like down in this dungeon and she's just like a totally different character at this point. Like imagine like feral Helena Bottom Carter or like – yeah. And she so, just she like, blames the doctor for everything that's happened. And just hmm. like all, all it is now is like she doesn't even care about science or any of this crap. She just wants to murder the doctor more than anything <laughs> in the world. We'll call it death in the Ronnie. Because here's my thing. Okay. That, like, she, she could be the – she could be like the big bad of Capaldi's final season. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember – Scott, we, we, we were talking about Clone Wars yesterday. Do you remember mm-hmm. when, like, uh, where Savage Opress, like, found Darth Maul and he was, like, insane? And he no, was, I like, do not because I haven't watched that yet. 
Okay, well, when okay when they get Which to the part I told where you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot. Um, so when you get to that part where like Savage goes goes to find Darth Maul, that is exactly what I have in my brain right now. Oh, okay. Oh, that'd right. be so good. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Because she's a cool character in. It's almost like we're just seeing the 1966 Batman version of the Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. The other problem I, I have. I love Batman Ronnie, 66. I'm not talking crap about Batman 66. I could use a little more. The, the, the other right problem now. I have uh, with the Ronnie, on top of all the other numerous problems, um, but like the biggest problem I think I have with her is that her name is the Ronnie. It doesn't mean anything. Like, Well, it, it means so, Queen in Hindi. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the more you know. Weird. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? It look, looks sounds know. cool. Okay. I because I really, 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 really like the Ronnie in theory. Like, you know how the Master is supposed to be the Moriarty to the Doctor Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're running with that metaphor, like the Ronnie is supposed to be smarter than all of them. So she is like the Irene Adler, but not like the crappy, like BBC Sherlock Irene Adler, like right. the book, like the one that she's the one that like outsmarted yeah. Sherlock Holmes. So Rachel like, McAdams. I think, yeah. So like she, <sighs> she's supposed to be like five steps ahead of everybody else. But like in the two stories that she appears in, like she is like three steps behind. And mm-hmm. I yeah, think, yeah. like, if you write her like Irene Adler is supposed to be, like, to the Dr. Sherlock Holmes, like, I think that would be, like, amazing. And, like, yeah. I'm keep, I don't know. It's, or, like, imagine, like, the Talia al Ghul or, like, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'd be really cool if you did a story with, uh, with, with Capaldi and Missy and they're teaming up because. That like they they have to team up because of like something crazy is happening that they can't get figure out and then it ends up being the Ronnie. Dude, that and is imagine so like cool. the doc and imagine the doctor and Missy like fighting over the Ronnie. Imagine like the Ronnie is like Bucky. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz like it's another time lord. Like that's that's right. that's that's, a, that's huge. Yeah. And like and their so, backstory is like they went to school together. So it's like Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Like, but if one went crazy up. in a cave, yeah, yeah. And became like Khaleesi of the bats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Imagine like, 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 like they could go to this planet and there's all of these like, like hieroglyphics and stuff on the wall of like the mother of bats. Mm-hmm. And you're like, who's that? And then like you reveal in this hall, this Tim Burton hall of bats at the, <laughs> and this like dark throne is just the Ronnie. And she's like, hello, old friend. Yeah. Into it. Oh, God. We should fight for the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, also, one one last thing. When when um, when the when the iguana pull like pours out the antidote <laughs> to the bugs. <laughs> and damns his race. Um, there's this. There's this line that the queen has, where she's like, "Oh, if we survive, we will survive on our own metal. Like we were, we will do it on our own. In order, you know, we have to deserve to survive." There's a documentary I watched the other day about this. Um, there's this. There's this bird, this parrot in um, in New Zealand. Uh, the name escapes me, but it's this really fat little parrot that has evolved to walk on land to not fly. Oh, yeah. actually, the, bir- the, the bird birds. does. Yeah. The bird doesn't know how to fly. It, it walks on the ground because it has no natural predators on the ground. So it doesn't need to fly. But as a result, their food, it still eats what birds eat. It's like their grubs that are high up on trees. So there's just this stupid flightless bird that lives in New Zealand that can't fly and has to climb trees to eat. And so it barely eats and they're endangered because they're just, they, they, they've just stupided themselves into like endangerment. <laughs> they have no natural predators. People, people don't eat them. They just, they just got lazy over the course of generations that can't fly and only eat grubs. And so they're like endangered. And I can help think about those, those little, those little fat flightless pigeons when I think about these lizards. Cause like <laughs> you, you guys are not equipped for survival. Half of you, your Congress was in like an opium den. Mm-hmm. They, have a, they have a they have a their their skull has a rocket ship fin on the top of it. <laughs> I I, just, I really rose out of. 
I really, I, I really want Capaldi to be like, I think I'm going to go back to that planet. I'd like to see how they're doing. And they're just like skeletons <laughs> everywhere. Oh. oh. Oh, God. Oh, no. He just slowly backs back into his chart. <laughs> <laughs> no. What is it, Doctor? <laughs> Nothing, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> also there's that there's that moment where uh where mel um mel is talking to what's that guy's name uh by ba- he's talking she's talking to Bayus, her right? boyfriend yeah because Bayus Bayus said that um told the doctor like like i i'm i'm being forced to work for her and he's like well what if i outsmart her uh and and you know i'm doing the right thing and you know i'm doing the right thing but what happens if i'm captured he's like well then i'm gonna help her put you in the little tank thing in the brain thing he's like mm, you, you're you're a dick um but then <laughs> but then uh so he does that he gets captured and he and 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 and, and Bayes puts him in the thing and then uh mel is freaking out and he's trying to hold her back and he's like, it's fine, it's fine, just let it go, it's done now, it's over. And and then Mel is like, well, the Ronnie didn't didn't uh, bet on one, there's one thing that, that she didn't bet on, and he's like, oh, really, what's that? And he, she goes, the doctor's character. Yeah, <laughs> she like looks into the camera, and then it like zooms in a little bit, and then it's just like, all right, we're going to cut to something else. <laughs> That's what this yeah, episode, yeah, the, the story was was really about when you get right down to it it was about the doctor's it's, character it was it's ridiculous like <laughs> like okay so she didn't count on that probably because why would that be a factor and i mean obviously <laughs> it it becomes a factor like because that's how how the bakers wrote this script but why why would that be what why would that be a factor yeah. in that's in, how we beat an nice character it's ridiculous. It's it's a it's a ridiculous. Well, it's just such a stupid like 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 you know re, like bow to just pull out of your ass. You know, like you can't right. just imagine if at the end of you know for all of its faults, imagine if at the end of Batman and Superman, like Bruce Wayne turned to the camera and he goes, "Yeah, you know, what Dark Side, what Doomsday didn't plan on was Superman's character." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the? Well, what no, the, no, 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 because no, because that would have made sense because he saw. His character, and he actually, saw. Actually, yeah, that, that's very true. Yeah, yeah, totally. he that's saw true. it affect Doomsday. So no, no, this, this, that, that. If 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 the brain had started <laughs> taking on the characteristics of the Doctor, and then like in in a smug way, uh, uh, Mel says to the Ronnie, "Well, the one thing you didn't you didn't expect was the Doctor's character." Um, and Ronnie's like, no, foiled again. But that's not the order of this. The order of operations here is that <laughs> she says that, and then the doctor's brain waves proves that she's right. <laughs> and it's like, but that doesn't. There's no reason for her to make that assumption. <laughs> like, what, what about the doctor's character is helping is like is actually like what is is, is courage is, is yeah is what quick. does she think is going to happen uh yeah, it's waves it's, i don't know it's <laughs> it's insane it's it's insane like like i said it'd been another thing if if the if the doctor started taking over the brain with his stupid well, we haven't even talked about how he can't ever say any sayings right he's like he's like the biff tannen of um, yeah time <laughs> waits for time waits for snowman yeah Two wrongs don't make a left turn was another one, I believe. Right. And it's just, just ongoing like that. Somebody, Does that keep going? Somebody somebody watched Back to the Future and was like, that's what we got to do for our next Doctor. That's I, what um, Doctor Who needs. It's funny that you bring up Back to the Future because when everyone was like shuffling back to their homes at the very end, I really was like, I would love to see like the back of like Emmett Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. Oh my god! Just like his coat, or like yeah. His, like... No, I would love that. That would be <laughs> incredible. Holy moly! Well, they both um, have special ladies named Clara. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, that is the absolutely dreadful time in the Ronnie. Nick, you survived. I did. You survived. You came out on the other side, and you still seem to be on board with everything. So, and I'm ready for my my reward, which is. <laughs> which- the oh, movie. the eighth Doctor TV movie. It's going to be incredible. Oh, man. 
I can't wait. I don't. I don't know why. I don't know how or why you don't derive any joy from that Eighth Doctor TV movie cast. I, I do because I love Paul McGann, but at the same time, I don't. It. Oh, it's it the best kind me. of bad though. It's uh, the best kind of bad because it's 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 like cheesy, but like in a really fun way, and and all of it. If I if I'm not mistaken, look, the plot is <laughs> dumb. <laughs> but but it, at least it all clicks together theoretically. Yeah. Like, so I like it, it's not like this where you're just like, are they just making this up as they go along? Like that's right. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. So so you know the next so the next episode of the show we we'll be reviewing the the Doctor Who movie, right? Yes. Um. So this is kind of a you know so maybe listeners who you know don't want to. Or haven't been like you know you know watching the show with us while we you know before we talk about it maybe they want to for a movie you know because maybe a movie is like a different deal. Um, so where is this available? Is like is, I mean I can't imagine there's a Blu-ray of this, but like is it available to like if rent on like DVD, iTunes there's, or there's a DVD um, okay. and I imagine it's probably on iTunes to rent or whatever. Okay. Um, Amazon has all of New Who. Amazon Prime, but I don't think they have Classic Who. Yeah, didn't the BBC it, take all their classic stuff down off of the streaming sites and stuff? Well, they took all of Doctor Who off, and then they made a deal with Amazon for New Who. Oh, okay. Uh, so Amazon Prime has New Who. They have the exclusive rights to New Who. But have you read that article about how like Netflix's movie library has decreased like 33% in the past like, year? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Because mm-hmm. they're because pay- they're spending all their money on original content, which I'm not. And like, and there's so many different players in town now. Like, some people are going to Hulu, right. some people are going to Amazon, some people are going right. to whatever you know, what have you. Some people are making their own streaming services. Right. So I don't know. I don't think it's available anywhere that I know of. Other okay. like not legally anyway. Sure. But, but maybe um, you can like get a DVD on Amazon or like rent it on iTunes or something. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely true. It's worth watching, I think, because it's it's ridiculous. It's insane. Um, <laughs> it's it's absolutely insane. And you the know, greatest, it's, it's, it's the it opens with possibly the greatest the greatest expositional oh line. Oh my god! Line in cinematic history, like it's incredible. Yeah. Where it like the first line of the TV movie, you'll have to pause because you'll be laughing so hard. It's absurd. Um, can't wait. Can't wait. And, you know, but, and this is the only, this is what, the w- one of two on screen adventures with Day at the Doctor? Technically, only one because his regeneration story was a web only thing. Uh, okay. I guess I mean, like, you know, visual. Yeah. Visual, sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's That's only, insane. It's literally this movie and Night of the Doctor. Yep. Yep. Everything else is an audio. Um, but, well, it's a good thing he had a voice for audio. Yeah, but <laughs> kind of the – you sounded like uh, – you didn't sound like him. You sounded like um, Liam Neeson. Um, yes. I uh, – It doesn't oh, matter. Liam Neeson. Uh, Liam Neeson would be a great doctor. <laughs> oh, you love a girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look at Ringo Starr. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, ex- I'm really excited about the Eighth Doctor TV movie. I think it's going to be – gonna be great um it's gonna be a fun time i don't know how we're gonna tackle the recap uh we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure that out after we watch it i guess yeah um but i'm pumped it's gonna be a good time uh eric roberts as the master hey carmine falcone yeah it's uh it's gonna be the guy from shark shark to puss that oh was he yeah. Oh, I mean, Julia Roberts. Eric, Eric, Eric Roberts was Sal Maroney. Never mind. Yeah. Can't oh, yeah. Me. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Fal- Falcone was uh, Tom, Tom Wilkinson. Um, but hey, doc, uh, walls are closing in. Yada yada yada. <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that movie. <laughs> uh, so, Sorry, I just I just like flexed out of love for Batman Begins. <laughs> so anyway um that'll be what we cover next week we're looking forward to it 
Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's available uh, to stream anywhere or anything like okay. that. Um, but watch it if you can, guys. Yeah, it's worth watching for sure. Yeah, so that's it. So we'll see you uh, next week with Doctor Who: colon, The Movie. <laughs>